Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to Mindful Mastery. And today we're talking about navigating the dark night of the soul. This is a subject that comes up quite often in our community and I just wanted to dig into a little bit of what it is, why it's happening and how to get through it, how to navigate the dark night of the soul. So if you're on a spiritual journey, you will undoubtedly navigate a dark night of the soul and potentially multiple dark nights of the soul. It's a spiritual purification process that can be wildly uncomfortable and totally overwhelm the senses and the mind and the emotions. It's a lot to navigate and if you don't understand what's happening it can feel so overwhelming that you might feel like you may never get out of it. So that's why I wanted to make this recording today about the dark night of the soul so that we can understand what's happening and know that it won't last forever and it's actually a part of the spiritual, it's a part of the process of spiritual growth and development. But it can be a lot to navigate. So knowledge is power, right? And that's why if we know and understand what's happening, it might make it easier to navigate. So while I was doing a bit of research for this session, I came across a quote by Inyat Khan that states, There can be no rebirth without a dark night of the soul, a total annihilation of all that you believed in and thought that you were. And Joseph Campbell talks about the dark night of the soul, saying that the dark night of the soul comes just before revelation. When everything is lost and all seems darkness, then comes the new life and all that is needed. Now, this process is universal in so many of humanity's stories and writings and experiences. I also found this sentence on a Wikipedia page about the dark night of the soul, really insightful. It says that the dark night of the soul is the period of final unselfing and the surrender to the hidden purposes of the divine will. And this unselfing process is what makes the dark night of the soul so overwhelming and difficult to navigate. Because the dark night of the soul will usually come after a great illumination. You know, it's this, this experience of God, of the divine, that is so beautifully powerful. And it expands our consciousness to a point where it expands our consciousness outside of who we used to be or who we thought that we were. And this is when the dark night of the soul happens is after this illumination and the stretching of our consciousness, we begin to see things from a broader perspective. We begin to understand the workings of the world and the universe in a new way. And it goes against the ways that we were living. And so a breakdown starts to happen. It's like a shedding of the self, a shedding of the identity that we had because this spiritual experience that we've had is just so beyond anything that we previously knew. And it's taking us into unknown unfamiliar, uncharted territory and is encouraging our brains even to create new neural pathways. And when that happens, it diverts our mind away from the known and the familiar beliefs and identifications that had become so ingrained in who we thought that we were. And so this can feel like a death when we go through the dark night of the soul because that's 
that's kind of what it is. It's, you know, in the Inyat Khan quote here, they mentioned a total annihilation of all that you believed in and thought you were. And annihilation is a harsh but a fitting word for what's happening during the dark night of the soul because it is an annihilation. <laughs> an annihilation of everything that you thought that you were, everything that you used to believe, and everything that was familiar. And it can feel quite devastating to go through this and realize that the ways that you were living, the things that you were believing, the things that you were saying and subscribing to actually aren't in alignment anymore. And so you enter this space where you don't fully understand where you're going, but you know that the ways that you were being in the living and believing don't fit anymore. And a lot of the time, this awakening process challenges ego identifications that have been deeply entrenched sometimes for our entire lives up until the point of illumination. So when the illumination happens and we realize that we're so much more than this and who we are becomes annihilated, our minds don't fully understand how to process this situation and this experience. So it can actually feel like you're dying. And this is unfortunately where a lot of people will choose to leave the planet prematurely and it's tragic because if we can just get through the dark night of the soul you end up in a beautiful place of purpose and alignment and true fulfillment so during a dark night of the soul it's very common to feel like you're going through an existential crisis you'll notice that Things that used to interest you don't interest you anymore. Things that used to bring you joy don't bring you joy anymore. The things that used to motivate you don't motivate you anymore. You might go through an identity crisis, not knowing who you are anymore, n feeling like you don't even resonate with the name that you were given, feeling that you don't resonate with the ways that you've been living or the beliefs that you've had, the ways that you've dressed, all of it. You might feel that you've lost all meaning and purpose in your life. And this creates huge emotional turmoil and upheaval, feelings of restlessness, anxiety, depression, deep, deep depression that is unexplainable, feels like a deep grief. And this might cause you to go into isolation and withdrawal from the world because the world looks very different to you now. You're starting to see the world in a way that you haven't seen it before. You're starting to see people in ways that you haven't seen them before. You're starting to see yourself in ways that you haven't seen yourself before. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to process. And so a lot of the time during the dark night of the soul, we will isolate and withdraw from society because it's just too much to handle. And there's a purpose for this isolation as well. It might feel so incredibly lonely to feel like you don't relate to the world anymore. But this isolation also has a purpose. And this isolation, this solitude, is meant to reconnect you with God, with the divine. It's meant to reconnect you with your true self, your true heart, reconnect you with what's real. And the way to get to the real root of your spirit is to peel away everything that is not that. So during the dark night of the soul, you will be in intense periods of self-reflection, internal work, just examining everything that's going on, examining the ways that you were living, examining the things that you used to believe, examining what you thought was true and seeing if it really was true or if that was something that you were given by somebody else 
It's a very deep and very personal process. And because there's so much deep inner work happening, you might find that you are overstimulated really easily and just feeling very sensitive to light, to sound, to everything. Your skin might feel more sensitive and you might find that things that you used to enjoy doing now just exhaust you. During the dark night of the soul, you will probably feel just exhausted and totally fatigued because there is so much happening internally for you and your body is trying to keep up and to process all of the emotions, all of the revelations, every, all of the annihilations that are happening, that it just takes a toll on the body. So you will find that you are just tapped out. You may even find that spiritual practices that used to really nourish your soul aren't really doing that anymore. They might just not resonate at all. So those might start to fall away. And that can leave you feeling just spiritually empty and bereft, which is hard to deal with as well. You might feel totally disconnected from your faith. But despite all of this turmoil, you might also find that you're experiencing a growing acceptance of what's happening, a gradual surrender of control and trust in a higher power or the divine forces, however you would like to term it. So it's this strange mix of complete annihilation and upheaval, but also a growing sense of acceptance and trust. And when you're in the dark night of the soul, it can feel like an endless abyss. It can feel so overwhelming to your entire being that you might just want to shut the entire world out forever. And I understand this. I've gone through it a few times and it is a lot, but you will get through it. It won't last forever. Even though it does feel like that, it won't last forever. And the reason why a dark night of the soul is happening is to kind of till the ground of your spirit so that new seeds can be planted. This is a process that's necessary for spiritual growth and transformation. And if you can see it for what it is, for what's really happening, all of that inner turmoil is just the ground being tilled and aerated so that you can grow and transform and, and produce new new life it might help to get through it and it is temporary so how do we how do we navigate this how do we navigate the dark night of the soul well one way is to find meaning in the darkness and so like i was saying just before this even our darkest of experiences have lessons for us and if you look back on your life in hindsight, you'll see that the times, the challenging times forged you into who you are now. So the dark night of the soul can be a time of profound, deep learning and wisdom gathering if we allow it to be. So accepting that this is where you're at right now and seeing what you can learn from this process to make you stronger, to help you grow, will help you kind of get through it a little bit faster. Rather than resisting the process, resisting, you know, fighting the emotions and trying to not feel it, the more you fight it, the longer you're going to be in it. The more you fight it, the harder it's going to be for you. So if you can accept that this is what's happening right now, that it is a temporary situation, it's not going to last forever, and that there's something here for you, 
for your growth and your learning that can help you get through it. This is a great time to embrace self-reflection, really exploring the deeper layers of your psyche and observing the layers and confronting you know unhealed wounds and traumas that might be present during this dark night of the soul sometimes this upheaval happens so that we can see our shadows more clearly confront them heal them do that inner work it's not pretty <laughs> and it's not easy but if you can go into this with courage, there's an opportunity for big time transformation. And I know that it's tempting to just hide yourself away from the world, but if you can find support, that'll really help you get through this. Just to have a sounding board to talk through what's going on for you can be hugely helpful. So finding yourself a coach or a friend, someone that you can talk to about what's going on. Because you'll find that the more you share about your experience, the more you'll find that you're not the only one who's going through it. It's important also to find ways to move the energy through your body because it can be a lot. So mindful movement, yoga, exercise, somatic practices to keep the energy flowing through your vessel will help you to process emotions faster and also help you to ground through this process because there's so much happening and just allow yourself to cry if you need to this is this is a healing eruption that's happening so allow it to just purge and move through you if you need to cry if you need to make sound if you need to move around, shake your body, if you need to thrash, <laughs> whatever you need to do to just move the emotions through you will be really helpful. Any mode of self-expression and creation like dance and movement can really help you to just accept what's happening, feel it deeply and allow it to move through you. This is a healthy way to process all of this turmoil because if you're feeling all of this and just allowing yourself to sit in it, it can get a little bit dangerous. So you want to be able to just move it through you and keep moving it through you. A lot of people ask me how long the dark night of the soul will last and I wish that I could tell you that it'll just last x amount of days or weeks and then you'll be through it but i i can't give you that information everyone's journey is so unique to them that your your process is going to be unique to you as well and every dark night of the soul will have a different duration depending on where you're at in your journey and what is being processed what is being released so all i can tell you is that it will not last forever it won't it will be temporary and the more that you can embrace the process accept what's happening and move through it in as healthy a way as possible for yourself the faster you'll get through it and so i just want to emphasize again reframing because going through the dark night of the soul doesn't mean that you've done anything wrong it doesn't mean that you were a bad person it just means that there's something in your subconscious, in your mind, in your habits, in your patterns that isn't aligned with your highest good. So the dark night of the soul happens so that you can look at it, look at your beliefs, look at your limitations, confront them and overcome them so that you can be in alignment with your true divine nature and live in a more aligned way, if that makes sense. So the dark night of the soul is a purification process. And if you're going through this right now, just know that you're not alone. And within the darkness lies the seed of your spiritual rebirth. So be gentle on yourself during this process. 
Know that it won't last forever. Find ways to move your emotions through your body and hold yourself with compassion through this because after this healing catharsis, this healing eruption, you will find a newfound sense of connection and renewal and hope. I'm sending you all so much love. Thank you so much for being here, for being a part of the community. Please share this message with someone that you think it'll resonate with, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.